The house of Saul is Christianity and the house of David is Islam. And right here in the house of David, we have the truth, whether you like to admit it or not. But we are light years ahead of the Christian church and you Israelite camps. And today we want to talk about how a woman represents nations, kingdoms, and even churches. And with a woman, you can build a nation. You can build a kingdom. This is the reason why the king of Egypt killed all the men of Israel and kept the women alive. Because you can build a nation with them. Now let's go to Jeremiah 6 and 2. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a calmly and delicate woman. So the nation of Israel is symbolic and it can represent a woman. Now let's go to Jeremiah 3 and 8. And I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery and I had put her away. And have given her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not. But went and played the harlot also. So right here in context. This is speaking of Ephraim and Judah. And Ephraim went into captivity. Because of their disobedience. And Judah followed in her sister's footsteps. Judah followed the northern kingdom. And right here we see God gave Israel a bill of divorce. And according to his holy law, once a man divorces a woman, he cannot go back to her. Okay? She can't go back to him. However, she is free to marry another man. And this is exactly what happened in the nation of Israel. God divorced Israel. And the only way he can save Israel is by going through a Gentile messenger, such as the prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. Now, let's get some more scripture on God Almighty divorcing Israel. This is going to be Isaiah 50 and 1. Thus saith the Lord, where is the bill of your mother's divorcement, whom I have put away, or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? Behold, for your iniquities you have sold yourselves, and for your transgressions is your mother put away. Now, the theology of these Israelite camps doesn't make any sense at all. They say God divorced Israel, but he allowed his son to marry Israel. Now, that right there is incest. According to the law, a father and a son cannot share the same wife, okay? It only makes sense, and we are in the house of David, and we love making sense with the scriptures. It only makes sense that God will have to save Israel through a Gentile messenger. Now, let's get some more scriptures on how a woman represents a nation. This is going to be Revelation chapter 21 and 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God, out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. So this city was a woman. And think about your boy Paul. Paul keeps telling you that the bride is the church. The church is the bride the bride is the church. Now, how slow are you going to be? When are you going to catch up and understand that there's many stories in the Bible where it's talking about a nation in the figure of a woman? Now, I'm about to go over some. Let's go over to Genesis 39 and 12. And she caught him by his garment, saying, lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. So this woman is all over Joseph. She is Potiphar's wife. Now, this woman, she represents the Christian church. And Joseph, he represents Jesus. Peace be upon them both. Now, the Christian church 
is all over Jesus. But Jesus doesn't want to have anything to do with this church. Why? Because this church belongs to Potiphar. She has a husband. And her husband is Paul, the man with the fur, the man with all of the hair. He is the wolf in sheep clothing. I identify him all the time. The prophet Isa has nothing to do with the Christian church, seeing that the Christian church belongs to Paul. And he is not about to share the same woman with another man. Now, let's go on. And I want to show you more and more. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 5 and 1. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you and such fornication as it is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. Now, right here in context, an Israelite man has his own father's wife. And this is symbolic. And God is mocking Paul because Paul is the man who stole his father's wife. Who is his wife? Who is his wife? The church. Okay. Paul stole his father's church. And he is the man that is guilty of being the father when God Almighty is the father. Now let's get some more scripture on the woman representing a nation. This is going to be Judges 19 and 25. But the men would not hearken to him. So the man took his concubine and brought her forth unto them. And they knew her and abused her all the night until the morning. And when the day began to spring, they let her go. Now, God told us in Exodus 11 that the last and final plague would be the killing of the firstborn. And after this happens, Pharaoh will thrust you out. He will let you go. Now, the Christian church will continue to be abused and abused by the teachings of Paul until the killing of the firstborn. And once the killing of the firstborn takes place, and that is the prophet Isa, peace be upon him, die, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, causing him to die a natural death, then the church will let go of all of its prisoners and all of its victims. Right now, the church is going to continue to be abused. So we went over the prophet Isa in the story of Joseph, this church, this woman being all over him. And he has nothing to do with her. He leaves his garment in her hand. Now, who is the garment? The garment is symbolic of Paul because Paul is the wolf in sheep clothing. And there's many other references. Go to the book of Samuel. Remember what David said. Mourn for Saul. Because he clothed you in scarlet, okay? The church right now is wearing the garments of Paul. They're wearing that Babylonish garment, okay, that Akon stole. So let's get some more stories of a woman being a nation. Now, I really, really like this one. This is going to be in the book of Judges. This is the story of Jephthah and his daughter. Remember, Jephthah had a daughter, and his daughter was a burnt offering, man. She was a burnt sacrifice. It's sad. It's really sad. This is going to be in the book of Judges, chapter 11, verse 30. And Jephthah vowed a vow unto the Lord and said, if thou shalt without fail deliver the children of Ammon into my hands, then it shall be that whatsoever cometh forth of the doors of my house to meet me, when I return in peace from the children of Ammon, shall surely be the Lord's, and I will offer it up for a burnt offering. Notice, God did not tell him to do this. He is doing this on his own accord. Verse 32 so Jephthah passed over the children of Ammon to fight against them. And the Lord delivered them into his hands. And he smote them from a roar, even till thou come to Minnith, even twenty cities, and unto the plain of the vineyards, with a very great slaughter. Thus the children of Ammon were subdued before the children of Israel. And Jephthah came to Mizpah unto his house, 
And behold, his daughter came out to meet him with timbrels and with dances. This is the Christian church. This woman represents the Christian church. And she was his only child. Beside her, he had neither son nor daughter. Now he's mentioning son for a reason. Because this is a story on how Paul tried to sacrifice Jesus on biblical record, but was unsuccessful. The only person he could sacrifice was his own church. Paul is the man that set his own church on fire. This is a picture of the Christian church. Let's keep going. And it came to pass when he saw her that he rent his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter, thou hast brought me very low. Yeah, we know you very low because according to the hate deeps, Paul has a prison with his name on it in hell. And thou art one of them that trouble me. For I have opened my mouth unto the Lord and I cannot go back. All that stuff Paul wrote, he can't go back on it. The Christian, if he believes what Paul is teaching, guess where he's going? He's going straight to Bulas. He's going to meet the warden Paul of the prison he will live in for eternity. Verse 36, and she said unto him, my father, if thou hast opened thy mouth unto the Lord, do to me according to that which hath proceeded out of thy mouth. For as much as the Lord hath taken vengeance for thee on thy enemies, even of the children of Ammon. So she's literally praising her father for allowing her to be a part of the world's number one religion, Christianity. And she said unto her father, let this thing be done for me. Let me alone two months, that I may go up and down upon the mountains and bewail my virginity, I and my fellows. And he said, go. And he sent her away for two months, and she went with her companions and bewailed her virginity upon the mountains. And it came to pass at the end of two months that she returned unto her father, who did with her according to his vow, which he had vowed. And she knew no man. That's key. Remember what Jesus said, those who call him Lord, Lord. What did he say? I never knew you. OK, this is going into how the Christians don't have Jesus as their Messiah. OK, they don't have Jesus as their Messiah. They have a father. That's why she said my father. They have Paul. They have the garment that Potiphar's wife had. They don't have the prophet Esau going on and it was a custom in Israel so her father did with her according to his vow now that is going into how God almighty according to the hate deeps he's going to allow the Christian to be a sacrifice for the Muslims the Christians are going into the fire that's where they're going Paul was the man that set his church on fire so there's so many stories on how there's a woman in the Bible and she's representing a church. She's representing a nation. She's representing a kingdom. And without knowing these things, you're not going to be able to interpret the parables. You're not going to be able to understand all of the types and shadows in the Bible. There's so much we can go into. Now, Paul was a man who allowed the women to be superior in his church. He avoided following the law of Moses and he made up his own laws on marriage. A man is allowed to only have one wife. OK, he killed the men in his religion and he saved the women alive. Right now, women are so deceived. They have no idea of what the God of the Bible really said regarding marriage. And we see that the men are weak. All this stuff comes from Christianity. Christianity is a weak religion with no weapons, no gun. They are taught to live at peace with their neighbor. And all of this stuff right here is bogus. It is false. And with all this being said, I just wanted to show you from scripture after scripture, because what I say, what I think, it doesn't matter. But if I can show you in the scripture where it's telling you a woman represents a church. If I can show you in the Bible 
where a woman represents the nation of Israel, then you will be able to put the pieces of the puzzle together and understand all these stories that have women in them are symbolic of something else. And one of the most famous passages that I share with you today is how God likened the daughter of Israel to a comely woman. Okay, let's get one more on how a woman represents a nation. This is going to be 2 Samuel 11. And it came to pass after the year was expired at the time when kings go forth to battle that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. And it came to pass in an evening time that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, Is not this Bathsheba? the daughter of a lion, the wife of Uriah the Hittite. And David sent messengers and took her. And she came in unto him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness. And she returned unto her house. Now the woman's name is Bathsheba. You can spell Bath in her name. This woman represents the nation of Islam. This woman was purifying herself. This woman was performing wudu, ritual washings. This woman is a picture of the nation of Israel. Now, let's go back to verse 2, and I'm going to show you something in it. And it came to pass at an evening tide that David arose from off his bed. This is a picture of the prophet Esau. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised him up to himself. And we have the prophet Isa in heaven. He's walking upon the roof of the king's house. That's God Almighty's house. And from the roof, he looked down and guess what he saw? He saw another religion besides the Christians. He saw the nation of Islam washing, performing wudu. And this woman was very beautiful to look upon. This is not going into lust. This is going into a beautiful religion who fears God and associate no partners with him. This woman, by the name of Bathsheba, gave birth to a son we call Solomon. And the prophet Muhammad's name is written in his book in Song of Solomon 5. In 16, he is a picture of the Gentile messenger, the prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. Now, if you go to Song of Solomon, it brings out the shape of his nose, his eye color, his skin color, even the color of his hair. It brings out his exploit of him being chief of the 10,000 in Mecca. And it also calls him beloved which is another name for David, because David means beloved. The Song of Solomon, chapter 5 and 16, is a picture of the prophet Muhammad from top to bottom. Now, Solomon was the only prophet in the Bible who gave the children of Israel a prayer direction. And what do you know? Is it a coincidence that the prophet Muhammad also gave us a prayer direction? Solomon married any woman he wanted. And it's the same thing with the prophet Muhammad. He married any woman he wanted. It's in the Quran. So there's so many types and shadows and similarities in the story of Solomon itself. Okay, even from the moon goddess and how they say Allah is a moon god. We know that's not true, but we see that Solomon, David, All were pictures of the prophet Muhammad. So right there, I just showed you another one. Bathsheba represents the nation of Israel. Potiphar's wife represents the Christian church. You want to know who else represents the Christian church? The daughter of Jephthah, okay, who was burnt as a crispy critter, okay, 
Who else represents the Christian church? Oh, that woman by the name of Delilah who deceived Samson, who was a picture of Christ, who killed more in his death than in his life. Just like Samson, he filled and put his hands in between the two pillars, left to right like a cross. And he asked God Almighty for strength and he pushed and he destroyed more Philistines in his death than in his life. That's a picture of Christ. When he comes back to destroy the cross, he will destroy Paul's church. I can go on and I can go on and I can go on. I just wanted to give you a brief summary of women who represents nations, who represents kingdoms, and who represents churches. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the truth.